So we're going to do examples of product of a power. Again, we're going to distribute the exponent on the outside to everything that's on the inside. So I'm going to do this in red and blue. So I'm going to distribute 4 to the 2. I'm going to write down my x. 2 times 6. Do I have an exponent for the y? I don't yet. So what would I put there? Would it be a 0? No, if it was a 0, it would be there. So the only thing that's ever invis invisible is your 1. So we're going to write y, 1 times 6. All right? So I have this x, 2, and 6. So I write an x, 2 times 6 gives me, that's right, 12. y, 1 times 6 gives me, that's right, 6. Are my, are my bases the same? Meaning, are they the same letter? No, I have an x, I have a y, they're not the same, so I'm going to leave it like that. All right, change to a different color. Again, when we're looking at these, we're looking at the exponents on the inside. Look at the exponents on the inside. Are there any? No. So again, what exponent do we put when there isn't any? Is it zero? No, it's gonna be one. So we put a one there and a one there. After we do that, we can distribute. 6 and um, 1 and 2. So we're going to put 6, 1 times 2. And we're going to distribute the 2 to the 1. P, 1 times 2. 1 times 2 gives me, that's right, 2. So then the P would be 2. Can I simplify this? Well, at the very least, I can simplify the 6. 6 squared means I have 6 times 6. What is 6 times 6? Not 12. I'm going to have a 36. P squared. Am I done with this one? Yes. I have a 36. I can't do anything with that P squared. So then I'm going to leave it like that. All right, so 6 squared means 6 times 6, not 6 times 2. And then I get 36p squared. So looking at this, again, what do I have a missing exponent? I do. So I need to add that extra exponent. <clears throat> and we can distribute 1 and 3. This gives me a negative 2 to the third. 2 times 3 gives me a 6. And I just, I already multiplied it out. So 2 times 3 gives me a 6. 1 times 3 gives me a 3. All right? I can just multiply this out. So a negative 2 times negative 2. Times a negative 2. 2 times 2 gives me a 4. Times that negative 2 gives me a negative 8. Nothing happens with this x and the 6, so I'll leave it just like that. Alright. And last one. I have a d. I have d. We're going to distribute. Now I have three things inside. So we're going to get a little harder. <clears throat> so I'm going to add this 1 here and multiply that out. So I'm going to get negative 4 squared because 2 times 1 gives me a 2. I grab my x and I distribute 
2 times 2 gives me? 2 times 2? That's right, 4. And finally, do my y. 4 times 2? Two. 4 times 2 gives me? An 8. Is that done? No, I did that too soon. I still have this 4, this negative 4 squared. So we're going to need to multiply that out. Negative 4 times a negative 4 gives me 16. So I'm going to do 16 x to the 4th, y to the 8th. Now I'm done. Now, you might be asking, wait, miss, how do I know if this negative is with the 4 or if it's separate? Since it's within the parentheses, we're assuming that it is with the 4, all right, because we have the parentheses in its inside. If the negative would have been outside, then we know that our answer at the end would be end up being negative. All right. Let me erase some of this just to make room for this last one because we are going to need space. So if you haven't um, copied it all down, pause the video so that you guys can see it. Pause. All right. I'm going to erase to make room for the next one. And I'm actually going to rewrite it on this side because you are going to need some space for this one. So the last one, E. Says five x to a negative two. Sorry, I had a slight hiccup. So it's five x to the negative two to the negative three. That's the part that you didn't see, you know, a second ago. All right. So again, we're still distributing. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put a 1 because there's no exponent there, so I'm just making sure that's there. And before we move anything, because I know we've been normally moving things, I'm going to multiply everything out first. Because sometimes when we multiply two negatives together, it does go away. So we're going to multiply first. So I have my 5. 1 times a negative 3 gives me a negative 3. And then I can take my x, negative 2, and a negative 3 gives me a positive 6. All right? So again, negative and negative give me a positive 6. So now I can start moving my exponents. I look at the first one. This is negative, so I am going to go and move this guy down. So do that now. Draw my fraction bar. 5 to the third is going to move down. When I do that, I put my exponent there. Now let me make that a little bit bigger. And when I move it, it becomes positive. x to the sixth, is that positive or negative? It's positive. Does it stay or does it move? It stays. So I'm going to add that guy up to the top. This is in the solving section, so I'm going to do 5 times 5 times 5. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5 is 125, I think. 25 times 5, 5 to 125, yep. So this gives me x to the 6 over 1, 2, and 5. And that would be your answer for that. So again, when you do have negative exponents, wait till everything has been simplified first before you start moving it around. Negative 3 times 1 it gives me a negative 3. Negative 3 times a negative 2 gives me a positive 6. Since this is a negative 3, we do move it down. So I bring it down, and I get x to the 6th. 